Have you ever um, uh, been in a season or a moment where you can't handle it? (laughs) This is going to be a word for someone today. (laughs) Oh, man, if you were born yesterday, let me update you. (laughs) That... uh, Life is pretty wild right now. Like, we are in a weird moment of history. Like, things are wild. We see, like, gas prices are going up, and the economy is just upside down, and uh, groceries are expensive, and there's a war happening that is, of course, um, um, impacting so many lives. There's just so much happening And there has been, of course, if I can be honest, there's been like a few moments in this season where I say to myself and I say to God, I say, God, I'm not sure if I can handle it. I mean, like apart from the world's issues, what about my own issues, right? Life and, and pressure and responsibilities and family and friends and drama and trauma and all the baby mama stuff and everything going on in our lives. And I wonder if you have maybe said to yourself, I can't handle it. (laughs) Maybe um, if you are um, a student here like today and, you know, there's one word that's pretty close to just being like a swear word and that is syllabus. Right, if you're a student, right? So, so, it's the, so it's like the list of all the things that you need to do and the assignments that you need to complete in order to be done. And you're thinking to yourself, I'm not sure if I can handle it, right? Or maybe you are a, a parent and you are in the thick of raising a teenager. <laughs> and the hormones are going through the roof and then they like somebody and then they want a date and then they want a cell phone and this and this and this and this and that. And you're like, I'm not sure if I can handle it, Bradford. Or maybe you're a single mom and you're with your kids at home or you're a single dad and you're just exhausted and you're tired and you're thinking, I can't handle it. Maybe you're um, a nurse In the past, like two years, you have just been exhausted and tired, and you don't think that you have enough in you to pull through another day. Your floor is crazy, and you see people dying every day, and you sit by yourself in a corner, and you think, God, I'm not sure if I can handle this. Maybe you're uh, a uh, uh, an owner of a business, and you're trying to heal, and you're trying to like restore what, what you lost over the, over the last two years and you're thinking, I'm not sure I can handle it. And I think if, if we can be a bit real today, when we're in this space of being overwhelmed and being that I can't handle it, I think we need to take some time to like remove like the mask and remove the spiritual armor and remove the, you know, the exterior and, and remove those, you know, the facade And I think we just need to agree and just like appreciate that being in a place where I can't handle it doesn't make me a bad person. It doesn't even make me a weak Christian. It doesn't make me, you know, a bad person. It just makes me human. Being human is living in this space where you can't handle it, where you are stuck in this space and God is led you here and God has brought you here to a space where you can't handle it. And I remember having a moment uh, like to myself and just kind of having like a panic episode and feeling like I'm not sure if, if, if I can handle this. And I remember the father just like reminding me and he's grabbing my hand and he's saying, it's okay to not handle it. And I'm just reminded of, like, the dad who is, you know, walking with his kid 
into some dark space or to the dark bathroom. He's like, turn the lights on, right? And the, and the father is not slapping his hand saying, get over yourself, get into the dark bathroom and turn the light on. You are a man now, right? No, it's not that. It's, it's like this gentle clasp of the hand that says, I'm here with you. Has anyone here been in a space where you can't handle it? <laughs> the disciples of Jesus are following him and they've seen Jesus teach and they've seen Jesus heal and they've seen him do amazing things and they follow Jesus into the lake, to the Sea of Galilee and they're in, in the middle of a storm, which is surprising to me and fascinating because these guys are seasoned Fishermen, right? I mean, these guys have, you know, fished this space for, like, I mean, a lot, five, six times a day. Like, like, these guys lived in these waters, and there was a moment in the storm where they couldn't handle it. I mean, seasoned guys. I mean, guys who know better. They know how to handle these types of situations. Matter of fact, they thrive in it. I mean, like, they are built for the storm. They are built for those things. But surprisingly, in this moment, they're with Jesus himself, and they say to themselves, well, I'm not sure if we can handle this. <laughs> and so, like, the water's happening, and, and the waves and the winds are happening, and they're like, Jesus, Jesus, wake up. Save us. We are about to drown. We're about to die. And Jesus he gets up and then he rebukes the waves and then immediately there's a calm, there's a peace. And he says, oh, ye little faith. They're in a moment where they can't handle it. And so what do we do as Christians and what do we do as followers of Jesus who profess the name of Jesus and who love Jesus? What do we do when my humanity gets the best of me? What do we do when I'm in this space where I can't handle it, and I believe we're going to see some truths from this passage, that I believe and I hope and I pray that will, of course, anchor us in those moments where we can't handle it. And the first one is this, is when you can't handle it, remember the storm isn't the end of the story. When you can't handle it, remember the storm isn't the end of the story. I love the, the, the disciples. I mean, they made the right choice, right? They approached Jesus, Lord, save us. But then they had the wrong belief. We're going to drown, <laughs> right? Lord, save us, which is good. It's right. It's amazing. You go to Jesus with your concerns. You go to Jesus. But then... They start to predetermine the outcome of their life. And how many of us go through life and we predetermine the outcome of our life? <laughs> and I believe that this is the, the difference between being concerned and worry, right? Like, being concerned means that I'm perplexed about a real life today issue, right? And God wants us to be concerned. Like there are still thousands and millions of people that haven't heard the, the story of God and that they, and that God loved, like there are still people who haven't heard about Jesus. That's something to be concerned about. That's something that should keep you up at night and say, how in the world should I live when there's people who are just on their way to hell right now, right? That's something to be concerned about. Or, hey, my, my, uh, my uh, children are sick and there's no answer. That's something like, to, be, to be concerned about. Or right now, there is a... Uh, a a, a, a wing shortage all over the world right now, and I'm concerned. I'm concerned that there are no chicken wings left for me to have four or five times a week. Maybe that's just me. But I'm concerned. And that's worthy of being concerned about. We have real stuff in our real lives that's worthy of just feeling perplexed and feeling concerned about. But the line is very subtle. 
where we cross from being concerned to now being worried. There's a line between just being perplexed about a certain issue, and then we start to predetermine the outcome of those concerns and then of those issues, where we say, well, I guess my kids aren't doing well in school, so that means they're stupid, and then they're not going to go to college, and they're not going to get married, and no one's going to like them. And then we go down this trail of then we start to predetermine the outcome. Did you know that I found a gray in my head the other day? I'm 29 years old. Yes, I do look like I'm 39, but, but, but there's a moment where my wife's like, hey, I don't want to ruin your life, so please receive this with so much grace. But you have a gray in your head. And then I'm thinking, it's over for me. My best days are over. And then I start to feel this like knee pain all of a sudden, and I'm thinking, is my life ending? And then I start to look up on like WebMD, you know what I'm talking about? You all do it, right? <clears throat> you got a cough, you think, oh, I'm about to die right here. And so, and then I'm up all night thinking, God, I'm getting old. I got to save kids. I got to go to like, and I'm thinking like all these little scenarios. And this is what happens when we worry. When we worry, here's what happens. We expect the worst. Matter of fact, as Christians, when we should believing and submitting our life to Jesus, we're actually believing for the worst. And instead, in this moment where I feel like I can't handle it, and in the moment where I feel, of course, overwhelmed, we need to remember what Jesus taught and that's in Matthew 6 where he says, aren't you more valuable than they? Where he's speaking about his sovereign rule and his sovereign care over the, um, the birds of the air and the flowers of the fields and all these things that God controls of and God takes care of. But yet, he reminds us, aren't you more valuable than they? And in this passage, Jesus is Calling himself father in the sense of you have a father, you have a dad, you have someone who in his grace and in his power takes care of you. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And when you wake up tomorrow, he has the same power and he has the same grace. And he invites us to worry about the concerns of today. See, the Bible says that Jesus gives us our daily bread, which means he gives us what we need to handle this moment right now today. Is that he gives us his grace, his provision, himself, his power, who he is right now in my storm, in my life today. So why worry? Here's what the Bible says in Matthew. This, He says this, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And instead of projecting into the future what I can't control, what I can't handle, I look to God and I pray, God, would you give me what I need today? And sometimes that is, that is like provision and that's a miracle and it's healing, but sometimes it's just peace. Woo! <laughs> sometimes the miracles burst open, praise God. But then there's moments where God just gives you joy and you can't explain it. It's like your life is falling apart and you're laughing? And that's what God the Father does is he's inviting you to ask, say, God, what do you want me to experience right now in this moment? And instead of worry about the future, we rest today in the hands of God who sees the future. You see, here we go again. Thank you. You know, you see, 
people who don't follow Jesus worry, right? Because that's what the Bible says. He said um, even pagans worry, like they worry. Why? Because they don't like submit their lives to a father or to God. But we do. (laughs) We have a loving, caring father who cares for our needs and our wants and he looks after us, you have a father, you have a dad who loves you, who cares for you, and your life is too important, and God cares about you too much for you to worry. So God is inviting you that when the storms come, to not define the whole story by this one storm in your life, because there's going to be more storms. To not define the whole story by this one moment in your life, but to trust God that this story, that this storm is not the end of the story, and that if he's still there, and, he, and if he's still alive, and if, he's, and if he's still risen and good, that means the storm won't get the best out of me. Amen? Number two is, when you can't handle it, Remember that the storm is an invitation to trust deeper. Remember when you can't handle it, remember that the storm is an invitation to trust deeper. This is amazing. Jesus like responds to them freaking out. And then he says, oh, ye little faith. And when I read this, I was like, well, that's not fair, God. They're dying. <laughs> they're, like, they're about to be submerged. Like, you, you can't tell them, oh, ye little faith. Like, like, like that's not fair. And then if you look at, at the Greek of this phrase, this is amazing. It means that they didn't have the full picture. Which meaning that their faith was not little, but it was fragmented. Oh my gosh. That this this phrase is not about quantity, it's about accuracy. In this moment, they had seen Jesus be a teacher, right? The Sermon on the Mount. They've seen Jesus be a healer, but this was the aspect of them of Jesus that they had not yet fully like seen. And it wasn't that their faith was too small. It's that their view of God was too small. (laughs) It's like, for example, so me and my wife, like she knows me to a T where um, if we go to like a restaurant, like she knows exactly what what I want. So if I leave and go to the bathroom, she knows exactly what I want. It's, It's either wings or spend it. Like she knows, like she knows, and it's always a Sprite. Like she always, like she knows, right? Now, if I uh, go out with, you know, one of you, and I say, all right, so I'm going to leave, you just order what you think I want. And you're like, wow, that's a lot of trust. And then, then you order me hummus. (laughs) And I'm not going to like it. Right? It's like wet dirt on 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 a plate, and you're dip in these like nice fancy breads and pretzels which doesn't change the taste of sand in your mouth (laughs) and I can't fully trust you because I don't fully know you and that's what faith in Jesus is like is that where we're in the middle of a storm and we're freaking out It's not because our faith is too small. It means that we haven't yet seen a side of God yet. And God wants to show you himself. God wants to reveal to you who he is. And some would say that the storms had to happen. That the storms had to happen because God wants to reveal himself to us that only the storm can reveal. Can you imagine if you didn't walk through sickness? 
then you wouldn't have seen God as a healer. Imagine that if you didn't experience the weight of your sin so much so you're running and running, then you saw God as Savior, and as Christ. Imagine if your marriage didn't break down. Yes, I know. Then you wouldn't have seen God as the restorer and redeemer, and then it beckons your faith, and it beckons your trust, and it beckons your love, and it beckons your affection because you've seen God do it. So when the next storm comes because you've seen God do it, you know that he's capable of doing it again. Yeah. Woo! Psalm says this, those who know your name trust in you. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. See, the size of your faith is determined by the size of your God. And when we're in a, a, a storm and when we're in a, a situation where we can't handle, we need to pause, we need to breathe, and then we need to pray, God, show me what you want to show me in this moment. Show me who you are. Reveal yourself to me. Show me what you have purpose for me to see so that when I see you, I don't take a step down in fear and doubt, but I take a step up and I trust the one who has revealed himself to me. And, you know, and that's why it's so important that we know the Lord and that we spend time with the Lord and that we build this, um, 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 this history with the Lord and we spend time and we know him because then when the next thing happens, we know, we know him. We know his voice and we know because he's a good father and he hasn't failed me yet, he won't fail me now. When you can't handle it, remember that the storm is an invitation to trust deeper. There are times in your life when God will allow you to be overwhelmed in order to give you an experience of a bigger view of him. And when we worry, what we do is we... We shrink them, <laughs> and then we make ourselves bigger, right? And we try to control everything and charge everything and be in charge of everything and all this type of stuff. When God brings you to the right place at the right moment where you are overwhelmed, where you can't handle it, because he's trying to restore our view of who he is, that he's big, and he's transcendent, and he's awesome, and that he's in charge. Then lastly is this, when I can't handle it, Remember, Christ is able. When you can't handle it, remember, Christ is able. You know, when the storm comes, I've lived long enough where I see the storm as a gift. A gift. A gift where he, he, refines me and he shakes things up and he shakes um, 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 my security and he shakes my safety and he shakes those things up because he's trying to remind Bradford that Bradford is a really bad God. <laughs> Not guy, because I'm a great guy, by the way. <laughs> but that Bradford is a bad savior. That Bradford is a bad Jesus that Bradford doesn't have things in control like he thinks he does. That Bradford is not in charge like he thinks he is. But he invites us in those moments to remind us that he is the author of the story. That he is the one who is ruling above all the, the problems and the storms of life. He reminds me that when I can't handle it, good. <laughs> good. I'm glad you can't handle it. Because I am. Christ is able to handle what you can't handle. 
And what's amazing about this is that God is not mad at you or me for being human. He's not mad at us for having a freak out. He's not mad at us for having a moment where we can't. He's not mad at us for saying, God, I can't handle it. Here's what uh, David says. He says this in Psalm 103. He says, he says um, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed and he remembers that we are dust. You are human. And God is not looking for superheroes, praise God. He's not. So just like, just, just remove like the pressure, remove those like, okay, like I have to be in charge, like I have to handle, just remove that. God is not looking for superheroes, but God's not looking for spiritual wimps either. Like, yeah, have your moment, freak out, but by the end of the day, you need to remember, Just like remember what Paul said, and Paul said this, he said, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show the all-surpassing power is from God and not us. It says this, Paul says this, we are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. God's saying, be human. You can question. You can doubt. You can be frustrated. You can have a moment, but remember who lives inside of you. That you have the same spirit that lives in Christ, lives in you. And you are a container of the glory of God. And you're a container of the power of God. And so while we glance at the storm, we gaze at the Savior who said, hey, this storm may come, but you won't be crushed. You won't be destroyed. It may perplex you. It may stress you. It may just make you go wild. But by the end of the day, Christ is able. Please help me preach. Is that okay? Is that okay? good? See, God doesn't want us to ignore the storm, but just to remember he's greater. Because the gospel calls us not to hold on tighter, but to rest deeper. See, when we realize that we can't handle it, it's It's the gospel awakening us to saying, look at Jesus again. If only only the disciples can just, just receive and look back and remember who that person is and why he's sleeping and saying, you know what? I'm gonna take my cues from what he's doing. If he's sleeping, then I should be sleeping. Why aren't you sleeping? Why aren't you resting? Why aren't you trusting? Because he's able to handle what you can't handle. And Jesus proved that by saying, if he can handle death and hell and sin and shame and the demonic And all that, if God can handle that, if God can handle the storms of the earth, what makes you think that God can't handle what you have in your life right now in this moment? So rest deeper and trust that Christ is able. Would you stand with me, please, all over this room? Look at that. Three three minutes left. Praise Jehovah. I want to pray. Every head bowed and every heart focused on him today. I want you just to take a few moments with the Holy Spirit and just like return to him. Just return. Just return by saying, God, I'm not in charge. I'm not in control. God, I can't handle it. I can't handle 
another day. I can't handle these kids again. I can't handle this. I can't handle my job. I just can't handle it. And would you let him just remind you in this moment right now today who is really able? That he's able. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare today just in faith over just my own heart that you are Lord and that you are Christ and that when we can't handle it and when we feel overwhelmed and when we feel exhausted, when we want to throw in the towel and when we want to quit, you remind us that that's exactly where you want us to be, that we can let you in and to lay down our pride and then lay down our arrogance and just surrender to you again today. And so, Lord, we say with our hearts, yes, yes, Lord, we surrender to you. Lord, we love you. We confess that we need you, that we're just framed, that we're dust, that we're just human. And Lord, we need you to be Christ in us and through us and with us. Lord, we love you today. Help us to see you better as we close today. Lord, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we all said, amen. Hey, amen. Hey, but before we leave today, uh, the Lord put on my heart to pray for those who have, uh, uh, um, who have like sleep issues. The Lord's just been like stirring my heart just over the weekend of those who may be wrestling with um, nightmares, in, like, in, like, like in, uh, um, insomnia, just, just like having just bad sleep. Not because, you know, like we're parents, okay? I can't actually pray for that, sorry. But we're gonna pray for those that just because of the, the weight of anxiety or the weight of depression or the weight of those things, you just haven't had sleep in, like in a long time. If that's you, would you raise your hand just real quick if that's you? that you, it's okay, we're gonna pray, we're gonna pray. Holy Spirit, we speak Jesus. We speak Jesus over the, um, the, the body right now. Lord, you said in your word that you give your loved ones sleep. God, you care that we lie down in peace and in safety. And so God, we speak Jesus over the brain today. We speak Jesus over the the body today and we say in the name of Jesus, sleep. We say in the name of Jesus, rest. In the name of Jesus, peace over your mind and peace over your heart today. Lord, we claim and we declare healing over our hearts and our bodies and our lives that we will sleep because we trust in you. And so today we receive the miracle and the healing of a rest in a sleep that is blessed, a rest in a sleep that is good, a rest in a sleep that is so good that we're shocked when we wake up. Like, man, I just had the best sleep of my life. And so God, restore right now. So Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen.